Um, I'm Tushar Ketia. I'm 29 years old. No, where you, no matter where you go in life, no matter the fact that tomorrow you might end up owning real estate in other countries in the world, you have to remember where you were born from. And for me, home's always going to be Kitale. And it reminds me of my roots growing up in next to maize farms and cows and sheep and goats on the way to school. So, yeah, I had the chance, as I always believe that, for you to make a good boss, you have to work under someone first. You have to. You have to know what the value of employment. You can never make... All the, all the billionaires, all the entrepreneurs at once worked for someone. Sometimes they worked for free. That has the biggest value. And I'm in sales. I love sales. So I went into business development and had the chance to look after supermarkets in the, in the UK. Spent close to three years there, but home heart was always back to, to come back home into, into Kenya. So in 2011 is when I came back to Kenya. And I spent about two years in Kitale, just rejoining the family business, which is again in FMCG trade and everything. But then I, I, I grew myself. I think it's always important to find your own path in life. And I actually came back thinking I'll join and grow with the family business, but it was a mismatch of ambitions in life. So I chose to walk away and step out. So in choosing to walk away, the easiest thing I could do at that time, as much as my passion was retail, 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 because I'd always worked in that industry, I had to find something that didn't require much capital, or it didn't pretty much it didn't require any money to start with. And that was my advertising and media business. That's how I started with Tria. So Tria was born in June 2013. So we are just about two and a half years old. So we're still babies. I'm just starting out my business venture. I'm still a baby in the business world. Two and a half years old is my oldest company. So that's when I started Tria. So Tria focuses on transit advertisement. So if you've seen all these ads on KBSs, uh, it's my company that does it. And it was about focusing on a niche. It was about looking at an opportunity where other people saw challenges. Oh, all these matatus, so much traffic jam. But what I saw was an opportunity. So I started with transit advertising, which was specifically advertising inside buses, outside buses, and then things like activation on the buses. So that business is now two and a half years old. And I'm very proud to say we've able to work with some of the world's biggest brands. Um, and that's where now it's better at that time, rather than being employed by Google, HP, Dell, you're being paid by them to do job for them. As George says, media is very expensive. Yeah? So it comes with a lot of benefits. So that was a very specific focus in my niche. Uh, and I kept that business for about two years. Stabilized that, that is when I finally decided to jump into retail. Because I finally had the capital I needed to pull into now what has become a gigantic business, which is called Society Stores. So I've got two different divisions, a media division, which is Tria, and a supermarket chain called Society Stores. If you live in Thika, Meru, Maua, and Naivasha, these are the four stores we have. We've been able to do those four stores in one year and three months. It has been a crazy journey. We started with 60 people in Thika. We're up to 350 people in one year and three months. That has been the journey. It's not been easy. Uh, and, and, and as George said, for us, it's not about how much money we make. It's not about anything. But it's to me about saying, this is a business that looks after 350 families. This is called influence, positive influence, using your business. So if you think businesses are just to make money, then you should not do business. Then you're better off being employed and save your money there. Yeah. So I think I'm up to date with where I am right now. We're up to four stores. We're opening Kayole. So first one in Nairobi, finally. We're opening in Kayole next week. So yeah, we're up to five stores. And then Limuru in July. So there. And then we pause. We take a de deep breath because we've overstretched our limits. It's time to consolidate and pause as well. So I, that's my short journey to date. Thank you very much. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe just if I could start off the session of questions with one question. You, your company has been estimated to be in the range of $7 million. If that's true, how are you able to get there in just less than two years, in less than three years? My name is Keith, and I'm an IT solutions provider. I work with um, startups and small businesses and show them how they can leverage on IT to grow their businesses. I have two quick questions. One, um, there's been a gray area. How do you know and how do you distinguish 
you are an entrepreneur or you're a business person or you're self-employed. I think there's a mix there that sometimes uh, it will be helpful to clarify when do you know you're aware. And two, um, when do you think it's right to borrow money or to ask investors to come and buy either equity or debts into your business? Okay, so I think you've asked me some great questions. Um, if you look at the real definition of an entrepreneur, it's someone who takes risks in order to get a return, okay? It does not state that you have to own a business. I think entrepreneurship to me is a mindset. It's kind of what you think about yourself. We could have people who own their businesses, huh? a lot of guys who, they own a business, but they have such a bad mentality towards their customers, towards their people, that they, they're not enterprising, in, they're not enterprising in their nature. So entrepreneurship is more about your mindset. It's about, are you willing to take risks? Now it means you could be in your job. You could be employed, but you're an employed entrepreneur. If you look at most of our CEOs in the blue chip companies who are doing well, they're actually employed, but they're still entrepreneurs because they're out there taking risks and taking chances. The difference is, yes, they have a company behind them, but at the end of the day, it's an individual that is leading the way forward. So you could own a business, but not be an entrepreneur. You could be employed, but be an entrepreneur. Yeah, and that's why I talked about the fact that during my time at PNG, I've stepped on a lot of toes because I always wanted to push the boundaries, be ready to push the boundaries. If you stay in your little cubicle, even when you're working and say, you know what, I'm happy doing nine to five, I'm getting my 50K net at the end of the month, then you're not an entrepreneur. Then that means you're just supposed to remain where you are. But if you're already in your work, you start showing risks, you start taking some bold moves, even though you're within employment, and obviously I'm talking about you're within your boundaries, and you're able to deliver that to show successful results, then it means you're able to say you are an entrepreneur. So there's that myth about entrepreneurs. I know we, they've been glorified as huge business owners and everything, but entrepreneurship starts from your mindset. And as you start growing out of your employment, you start moving to self-employment, and self-employment means just you by yourself. Are you so self-driven? Are you self-motivated? Are you willing to keep failing several times and let everybody abuse you and tell you you're useless? But here you know you're, you're, you're priceless. Everybody else thinks you're worth nothing. You know you, your worth is you can't put money to it. That is about entrepreneurship. And then finally, finally, is when you start running your own company with people yeah, is when you is when what we coin as entrepreneurship, but it starts ages ago. Yeah, as I told you, if I look back at my inspiration at the age of six and seven in primary school, I was selling I was selling sports biscuits to the borders because it was at a cheaper price than them buying from the kiosk. That was entrepreneurship. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to be about. To succeed, you need something to hold on to, something to motivate you, and something to inspire you. Those are the keywords that we take from this episode of The Startup. Until next week, God bless.